Hi, today we learn a very nice study that aims at improving the dexterity of the right hand and to train rest strokes. It's also good to train chord changes with your left hand. This study was written by an Italian musician and composer named Ferdinando Carulli. I have already introduced a bit of his background in the first video of this playlist. So, if you haven't watched it yet, I suggest you do it because I present in more detail some aspects related to music theory that I will not repeat for the sake of brevity. You can find the link in the description. The study we learned today is a classical guitar's beginner student's favorite. So, if you aren't very experienced yet and want to impress your friends, then look no further. You can find the study on this book. That is a collection of 30 studies taken from various sources. This is study number 4. So, first we listen to the study and then I give you some suggestions on the way you can approach it. We see the key, the chords, the time signature, the tempo and what exactly is a rest stroke. Actually, you don't need to know all this stuff to play it and you can skip this section of the video, but I think it's some useful stuff to know. Now, without further ado, let's begin. The first thing I do when I'm learning a new piece is trying to identify the key, because it's the set of notes from which the composer chose when he wrote the piece. So, if you identify it, you know what notes and chords to expect. In this case, it's quite easy. Let's do it together. The first thing you should check is of course the key signature. Every key signature characterizes two keys, a major one and a minor one that are said to be relative. Relative keys have the same note, they just start from a different degree. Remember that notes in a scale are called degrees, and this one has a particular name, which however does not need to be described in this video. The key signature with F sharp is the one for G major or E minor. But how do we decide which one is? Well, there are more things to look at. Check the last chord of the piece, because usually it's the chord built on the first degree of the scale. And if we look at the last bar, we see it's a G major. Then, look at the first chord, because it is also often the chord built on the first degree. If we look at the first bar, we find another G major. Also, if we listen carefully to the piece, we feel it is characterized by quite a happy mood, so we can be pretty confident that we found our key. Keys are on the subject of this video, so I won't give you many details about them, I'll just tell you what you need to know to understand what the composer meant when he wrote this study. If you're interested in more information, write me a comment and I'll try to answer you. I will use the terms key and scale almost interchangeably because we say that a piece is in a particular key when it uses the notes of a certain scale. In this case, we say the piece is in G major because it mainly uses notes of such a scale that are G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and then we start again from G on another octave. For the same reason, Chords we'll find in the study are mostly the ones in the G major key. Remember that chords are built by stacking thirds. This means that you start from a note called the root of the chord and add every other note of the scale. You can add two notes and obtain a triad or three notes and obtain a seventh chord. By repeating the process for all the notes of the key, you get the chords of the key itself. Let's see a couple of examples. If the root is G, we skip A, we add B, we skip C and we add D. We get a G major triad. Then we skip E and we add F sharp. This chord is a G major 7. There are plenty of different chords and some have funny names. However, as for the keys, 
course aren't the subject of this video, so I won't give you many details about them. If you want to know more, just write me a comment and I'll answer you. To sum up, triads in the G major key are G major, A minor, B minor, C major, D major, E minor, F sharp diminished. Seventh chords are G major 7, A minor 7, B minor 7, C major 7, D7, E minor 7, F sharp half diminished. Now that we know what notes and chords we may expect from the study, let's talk about time or meter. The meter describes how a bar is divided into beats and how these are accented. This study is in 2-4, that is a simple meter. Remember that the meter can be simple, meaning that each beat has a binary subdivision, or compound, for which each beat has a ternary subdivision. In the simple 2-4 meter, we have 1, 2, 1, 2. Each beat can then be divided into two eight notes, like this. 1 and 2 and 1 and 2 and. Let's now talk about rest strokes. The rest stroke is both a classical and flamenco plucking technique for which, after plucking, the finger rests on the adjacent lower string for index, middle, ring, or adjacent higher string for the thumb. This is in contrast with the free stroke for which, after plucking, the finger doesn't touch any other string. The rest stroke gives a fuller and rounder sound that has several uses, for example to emphasize the melody over chords. Especially in flamenco, where you need more volume, the thumb is very often played with rest strokes and there is also a technique named picado, where you play fast lines or scales by alternating index and middle fingers playing all rest strokes. I get often asked if the first phalanx should bend like this. Well, not really. I know it's easier to play a rest stroke if you bend, but when you play really fast, you may lose speed and volume. To get used to it, remember that the rest stroke movement is in the metacarpophalangear or MP joint, that is this one. So to train, try to keep the other joints in place and move only this one, like this. Do this exercise every day with every finger, index, middle, ring, and pinky. And of course, the thumb. For the thumb, the movement is here in this joint. Now, let's learn. All these reversed V symbols represent a rest stroke. The first part is all made of 10th intervals, so we start with the G, 6th string, 3rd fret, and the B, open 2nd string, played together. Then another G, open 3rd string, and we repeat it twice. Then an A, open 5th string, and the C, 2nd string, 1st fret. Then another G, also repeat it twice. Then a B, 5th string, 2nd fret and the D, 2nd string, 3rd fret, a G, again repeated twice, and we end on a B, D, 10th interval. So... Then, while you play an E, open 1st string, you have to mute the 5th string with your thumb, so... like this. Then F sharp, 1st string, 2nd fret, and then again more 10th intervals. E, 4th string, 2nd fret, and G, 5th string, 4th fret, and the G, as before, repeated twice. Then we have D and F sharp, G, repeated twice, C and E, G, repeated twice, and we end on another B, D, 10th interval. Then we have an octave rest, and we have the third interval, A, C, and the D, repeated three times, like this. Then E, D, and another third, G and B, a D, again repeated three times, like this. Then G, F sharp, and more tenth intervals, C, E, B, D, A, C, G, B. Then a sixth interval, 
D, B, and read that chromatic scale, C, C sharp, D, and we end on a perfect fifth, D, A, followed by another octave rest. This was the first part. Now for the second part, we have a D7 arpeggio without the fifth repeated twice, so D, C, F sharp, C, that are root, minor 7, major 3rd and minor 7, then G on the 3rd string, and another G on the 1st string, then G, D, G, D, G, D. We repeat these two bars. Then a C major arpeggio, C, G, E, C, then B, G, D, B, that is a G slash B arpeggio, a D7 arpeggio, then E, B, G, B, then C on the 5th string, E, C on the 2nd string, A, a D, B, 6th interval, D, a D, C minor 7 interval, A, G on the 6th string, G on the 3rd string, D, B, G, and finally an octave rest. The last thing we should consider is the tempo. The author marked the 8th note as 76, so let's set our metronome like this and let's play together. Remember that when you see rest, you have to stop notes from ringing. So for example, in this case, you have to stop the B, and in this case, the F sharp. Sometimes it's not very easy to do that, but doing it will add depth to your playing. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If so, please subscribe to my channel. I will post more soon. And remember to train every day. Ciao!